name is Jesusita Rivera. I am a fifth grade teacher in the San Francisco Bay Area, California. And this is my year 23 in teaching. I absolutely love teaching. It is a blessing. I love it. It's hard, but I love it. It's when it's good, it's still hard. When it's bad, it's hard. And what I mean by bad, a lot of external factors that might be causing disruptions in the classroom. But hey, you balance out and find the midway point. Mm, mm, mm. It's always a good time for a dance. It's always a good time. It's always a good day for a good day. Um, anyway, it's Christmas break and I found out school is open. The alarm is off. So here I am in my classroom. Um, cleaning and tidying. No, I don't have to be here, but I love sneaking in whenever I can to get a few things done. My kids at home are relaxing. I have a 20 year old and a soon to be 13 year old. They don't want mom around at home. So it works out. I don't have any makeup, but that's okay. It's a good day for a good day. So welcome to my classroom. I'm here to share some tips and just the amazing things that I do with my fifth graders. And um, if I haven't mentioned already, I am in the same school district that I grew up in through elementary school, from kindergarten through um, eighth grade. I did go to another school in the Pinole area, up in the East Bay, but that was just for a little bit. My Most of my academic career has been here in my homeschool where I teach and I'm glad to share any tips or anything that I might um, help you with your teaching career. Yay for teaching! I love it, love it, love it. Let me introduce you to my classroom. They're doing yard work outside right now. Look at these amazing lockers I have for my students. I got them from Raft. Here we have something called Resource Area for Teachers, Raft, where all kinds of items such as these lockers get donated by companies who no longer use them. You're not gonna believe it, but I got each tower for only 15 bucks. So that tower over there also for $15 for a total of 30 bucks. What a deal. Now my students all have a number and they get to put items in their locker. Here's a student who wasn't here for Christmas. So we put their um, holiday treat that they got in there so they can get it when they come back. These cubbies my awesome husband made. Totally cool. This is where the Switch class keeps their materials, their language arts materials and their social studies materials. Thank you, husband. My class photos, 23. Absolutely love it. Students love to come back and find their faces and then laugh at their faces and their hair. It's so much fun. Here are some books that I'm getting ready to scan in to place into my library. Yes, I said scan because I use classroom.booksource.com to hold my library. Every single book that I have in my classroom library gets checked out through classroom.booksource.com. And look at my library, everybody. Look at my library. Isn't it amazing? I absolutely love it. I have an amazing library. Kids love it. Stairs to go up. Absolutely love it. Did I already say absolutely love it? Look at my classroom library. And so, yeah, I use, again, classroom.booksource.com. I scanned in every single one of my books. Well, I got help. My daughter and her friend and my nephew came and scanned in every single book. And once in a while, I will delete the database and rescan because, you know, books grow legs. And so I have to, every once in a while, uh, scan and re-upload books, delete the old database and re-upload 
um, so I can have an accurate count of books. Um, I think it's coming up to when I should redo the scanning. It's pretty, pretty therapeutic, especially if you do it in the summer. Um, and yeah, I think the last time I did that was maybe three, four years ago. So it might be time to do it again. Classroom library, love it. Oh, Spider-Man has fallen. Now here is what my husband calls the machine. It's my management system. I have individual management system, individual student, whole class management system that's connected with this. And then I have team, team management system. And the teams are run by team heroes, as you can tell. Thor, Cyborg, Flash, Hulk, Panther, and Marvel. In my classroom, I have an economy system. The students earn marvelous swag points because being in school is cool, so you have swag. Here is where I keep track of any extra swag points students might earn or get fined. Um, they get daily swag points, three swag points just for attending school and doing their best. They can also get extra and they can also get fined. So here is the color-coded system that I have to keep me um, ready to award or take swag points away. So if you get a purple um, in your pocket, and of course I covered up the names. I have 30 amazing students. I covered them up to protect them. Um, if you get a purple, you get a desk or a chair fine. Your chair was pulled out or your desk is messy. The pink is extra swag points. If you get a green, it means you purchased something. If you're getting a blue, you're late from recess or lunch recess. I don't find the students for being late in the morning. It's not their fault. They're not the ones that are driving. So if they're late in the morning, they're excused in my book. Um, if you get um, orange, that means you got your planner signed last night. And of course, the red fine means that your behavior or something is off, so don't get it twisted and fix it. Now this right here is the 100% attention. I need you, so make sure you focus and give me your best effort. I use this handy dandy hotel bell. I think that's what they're called. I give one bell, then a second, then a third. I do not talk. I just give a first, a second, then a third. If I get to a third bell and I still don't have their 100% focused attention, I start removing these sides little by little, side by side. Because if I remove all four sides, I now have access to that 100. And if I take away one point, and that means that they are in trouble that they're not going to get their Marvelous Star Jar. Now the Marvelous Star Jar, when it gets full, they get a whole class reward. So this is for the whole class to give me their attention and respect. If they give me their attention and I don't have to get the three bells, the 100 is protected and at the end of the day, they get a star. They've already reached the halfway point and got their reward. When they get the top white line, they get a whole class reward again, but it'll be bigger than the halfway point, a bigger reward. They're so excited to get there. Now the team points, they love getting first place or second because they get first dibs at things in the classroom, such as who gets to read in the library, who gets to use the bean bags, who gets to shop in our swag shop first. I'll save the swag shop for another video. But at the end of the week, we add up and tally up their points and whoever has the most points is in first place. I keep track of their points by using these clips. Every one of these clips is worth five points. And here I have these um, document holders that I printed out the hero's uh, symbol and then even put the hero himself. If this team cyborg gets acknowledged for doing something amazing as a team 
or as an individual, the individual blessed their team with earning them a clip, which would now be five points toward their team. So as you can see, every team has their hero, the center of their tables. Works like a charm. I core with my colleague. I teach social studies, history, and language arts. My colleague has a Star Wars theme. So when the Switch class comes in, I have their team heroes that are, of course, Star Wars. And my colleague has the same team point system that I do for her, home, her, her homeroom, my Switch class. And so when they're with me, I keep track of who's being super awesome and amazing. And we basically just switch out the team heroes when my homeroom goes away to her class. And the Switch class comes in and we hand out the team heroes star wars for the switch class and that's how i keep track at the end of the day i send uh, my colleague the team points for her homeroom if you haven't figured out already that's thor's hammer i have a marvel and dc superhero theme because you must choose you are what you choose to be and up front and center is the Iron Giant. If you haven't seen that movie, you've got to see it. You are what you choose to be. And of course, our heroes there. I wanted to show you that at our school, we have Cougar Pride. And Pride stands for Personal Responsibility in Daily Effort. When the students do well, they get to have Pride on Friday, which is 30 minutes to go to an assigned location like outdoor play or Chromebook use, unless you're in the nap room. And no, you are not taking a nap. You are not attending Pride, which is basically detention for anyone who did not have Pride. Their names get written here. They get three chances and then they're locked in for the nap room that Friday. We often do not have nappers because they rather do what they gotta do, not get it twisted, and be available and ready for Friday Pride. As I mentioned before, my colleague and I share the students. There are a total of 65th graders. I have 30 and she has 30. When we come back in January on the 9th, we will have A Day, which means we keep our home room. And on B day, we switch for the full day. And then of course, on Monday and Fridays, it is our switch days where we have shorter blocks, but it works for us so far. This is how I set up my schedule for a homeroom day. And the schedule will look what, like whatever day we're on. And it just so happens to be that Tuesday is A day, which is homeroom day. I love these magnets that help me um, lay out what the day looks like. I'll put the times later and um, exactly what is happening under each heading. I got it from an amazing Etsy shop. I think it's called Lone Star Leslie. I love her magnets. High quality. Love, love, love. Highly recommend. This is how students know what day schedule it is. Like I said, when we come back on Tuesday the 9th, it'll be A day, homeroom day. So we'll just place Rosie the Riveter on the day and I'll list out the date so the kids will know and won't miss a beat. That's how we know what day it is, what schedule. Here I have our SEL board. It's really important. I tell the students that I am not just their teacher of academics, but their teacher on also how to help them manage their emotions as best as I can. It's not gonna beat the training or the instruction given by nurture from home, but it'll make up for anything that might be missing, I hope. Anyway, um, here are the finger puppet magnetic, what I call inspiration heroes. Some are fictional because why not? Why not believe? And some of course are real, such as, here we go. Y'all can figure out who they are, maybe. Right? 
Anyway, we're always talking about thinking traps. And here are some common thinking traps. I got this poster from the Child Mind Institute. And here are the favorite strategies we use to help self-regulate, because that's the goal, to self-regulate. Um, we are human, so we're going to feel these emotions. And so how to take care of ourselves. And um, so anyway, these are some of the strategies that work we use in class. And then here are some tools that we're constantly talking about to help us get through any uh, stress or any situation we might be getting ourselves into. Yay! Our signal with our fingers on how to get what they need, especially when I am teaching so they will not interrupt. Nice silent way of communicating what they need and I just nod yes or no. Oftentimes, most of the time, okay, all the time, it's usually a yes.